Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're picking up with day two of our No Offense devotional in the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along, <laughs> follow along with us. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, then Tori's going to pick up with the Devo. Let's do it. The scripture is Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10, and they say this. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ, and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness towards us, as shown in all he has done for us who are united in Christ Jesus. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he has planned for us long ago. The devotional is titled, How Can We Let Go of Anger and Offense? And it says this, Many of us are carrying offenses like accessories, not even realizing that they're weighing us down. So how do we let go of our anger, our offense, or our frustration in a healthy way? First, we have to lower our expectations of others. And second, we need to raise our gratitude for God's grace. It sounds simple, but it's not easy. Let's explore these two things a little more. Jesus was never shocked by sin, yet we often are. We tend to point fingers, cast judgment, and get angry. But Jesus simply showed up, listened well, and offered truth and grace. As Jesus neared the end of his life, he knew that Peter would deny him three different times. Peter refused to believe this, saying he would never deny Jesus. But Jesus, knowing full well that betrayal was coming, gives this beautiful instruction to Peter in Luke twenty-two thirty-two: I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthened your brothers. Jesus wasn't surprised by Peter's actions, nor offended at the pain they'd caused him. Instead, he called him to greatness after his repentance. We can choose to give others that same gift. When someone hurts us or wrongs us, it's easy to be offended. But how much better would it be to extend grace instead? We see another example of this with the woman who was caught in adultery in John chapter 8. The religious leaders wanted to stone her, but Jesus offers her mercy. He asks for anyone without sin to cast the first stone, and slowly everyone walks away but him. Often we think that holding on to offense gives us power. We like being in the position to throw the stone, hurl the insults, or have the self-righteous opinion. But the truth is, like the woman, we are all in desperate need of grace. It's only by grace that we've been saved and rescued. So it only makes sense that we should extend that same mercy to those who have wronged us. We have options. We can keep holding on to offenses that keep us bitter and keep others hostage. Or we can choose to lay them down, remember grace, and find freedom. Yeah, it's so good. I loved even one of those last sentences. We can keep holding on to offenses that keep us bitter and keep others hostage. Yeah. I thought that was really powerful. Mm -hmm. Was there anything that really stood out to you about this, Devo? Yeah, I loved the two things that he was saying. Number one, to lower our expectations of others. And I want to preface, this doesn't mean like lower your standards and the way in which like you are treated, but I think having healthy expectations removes a lot from relationships and then also raise your gratitude for God's grace. And I feel like we've talked about this a lot, but when we recognize how much grace we've been given, mm -hmm. it's so much harder to hold on to offense because we understand how much grace 
we personally need? And then who are we to not extend that same grace to someone else? And then I've, I've just experienced it in my own life where I have been completely offended by a friend and my character attacked and certain things. And it's like, man, it's really tough to let go of words that are hurtful or actions that are hurtful sometimes. But I realize that the only thing that's happening is it's poisoning me. Like it's, it's truly so harmful to my mental, emotional, and spiritual state of mind to hold on and harbor unforgiveness and offense. And then as soon as you release that, the freedom that you feel, and that doesn't mean that boundaries don't need to be drawn with people who are not um, kind or, you know, meeting certain Mm -hmm. standards that you hold um, in your life, but it's going to free both of you to not hold on to those offenses. Yeah. I like what you're saying about how it's not always just about your relationship with this person, the expectations you have on them. It's about your relationship with yourself and how that's impacting you to where you can start to make better boundaries or lower expectations Mm -hmm. to, to to make sure you're protecting yourself in that situation. But there's something that you said is kind of funny. Like, as you started talking, I thought about this analogy that you actually use a lot about like about, you know, holding on to that bitterness or resentment is like poisonous. Poison. Mm-hmm. And Tori shared this before, but if you had like a nice glass of like cool, crispy, clean water in front of you and someone puts one drop of poison in it, are you going to drink it? Yeah. You're most likely going to say no, at least I hope you do. <laughs> and <clears throat> That's what we're doing whenever we continue to live in unforgiveness, Mm -hmm. whenever we continue to live in resentment and bitterness towards people. But sometimes I feel like we as believers will try to just shoulder some of that stuff like, oh, I'm doing all these other cool things, but there's this just one small little blip of an area that I'm just going to hold on to, right? Because everything else that's really good is outweighing what's really bad, but it's still going to poison us just Mm -hmm. like that little glass of water with the one drop of poison in it. And so that's what I just wanted to think about today is that, is there that one thing, Mm -hmm. that one thing that can potentially keep you from enjoying the rest that we need to journal about, pray about, Mm -hmm. ask for forgiveness from, or for, ask for forgiveness from, how do you say that? (laughs) I think we need to forgive and ask the Lord to help us forgive. Because there was one other thing I wanted to add that Mm -hmm. forgiveness is not always like a a one prayer, one time thing. Mm -hmm. I know that that's happened for me in my life where I'm like, okay, I feel like I've released it. I feel like I've forgiven that person. I'm sorry for eating your Chick-fil-A. And and then something else happens and I get like triggered and then all like the floodgates open up and I'm like, wait, I thought I was past this. Like why Mm. are all of these things flooding up again? Why do I feel so triggered? And guess what? That's okay. That's human nature. But our response should be to go straight to Jesus. It's not to sit in that frustration. It's not to fan the flame of offense and try to justify Mm -hmm. all the reasons why you are right to be offended. But instead say, Lord, man, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to not be offended. I'm struggling to forgive. Would you help me? Would you come in in this area in my life and help me walk through what it looks like to truly release this to you, to truly release this person to you, to truly release this offense to you so that I can walk in the freedom that you have for me. Because I know that in my own strength, I can't do it. But Mm -hmm. when I'm operating in the spirit, that's when it happens. Yeah. And the last little point, which was point number two, which is that gratefulness of God is, Mm -hmm. This is something that I need to do a better job practicing, but I think we all need to do a better job practicing is that we cannot hold onto the badness of people when our hands are full with the goodness of God. Yeah. And so just be so full of the goodness of God or meditate on his word, like remind yourself of what he says about you and how he wants you to love people, like hold on to that. And it fills your arms so much. You don't have more room to hold on to anything else, right. but his goodness. And yeah. that will far outweigh any of the, you know, slights that we face. So good. Want to pray some out? I do. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we first and foremost thank you for your forgiveness, your mercy, and your grace, Father. 
I pray as we meditate on that, we would be so filled with gratitude that we cannot hold any offense in us, but instead we lavish that same grace, mercy, and forgiveness onto others. Father, would you help us be a conduit of your grace to others? Would we look different than the world? Would we not be easily offendable people, Father, but instead just carry your light into a very dark world, Father. Would you just help us in this process? I pray for the people who have been through seriously traumatic things and they're like, how in the world am I supposed to forgive this person? This should have never happened. Father, would you just remind us that we live in a sin-broken world, but harboring that offense only poisons us. And so, Father, would you help us rid our bodies of that poison today? Would you fill us with your grace, your love, your mercy? Would you remind us that we are covered by the blood of Jesus, that these offenses do not break us, that we are made new and we are whole in you? We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. Let's go. That was a powerful prayer. Um, <laughs> I always throw myself off when I when I get off my rhythm, but yeah, yeah that was really great. Um, now is that perfect time <laughs> to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys, and we're talking to you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao, ciao.